We've got to break out of this comfort zone. We've got to break out of the trance. Like Ted Cruz has done and said that Obama is dangerous and terrifying on his power grabs. Yes, it is dangerous and terrifying. Especially when you know how evil this political class has gotten and how decadent and disconnected from reality. And I agree with what Mark Levin said. He said Obama preparing country for a coup against Constitution. I don't think he's preparing it. They're doing it. And we get too fixated on Obama, folks. He's just a front man for some very corrupt Chicago mafia type people. And there's a lot of other corporations and power structures that want a power grab. Look at how Holder got away lying to Congress on Fast and Furious. Look at, for me, not just the NSA illegal spying and getting caught lying bipartisanly, but the targeting mainline Tea Party, mainline Christian groups, pro-life groups with criminal IRS probes and harassment and denial of, of 501c3 and things selectively. I mean, that is the very ether of tyranny. That's how Nazi Germany started. I mean, this is amazing. And I think the liberal mantle, their fake high ground, is the big problem here. And I oppose Bush and those power grabs. You know, we're just rotting. It's degenerating. But it has, I've got to say, and most constitutional law scholars I've talked to agree, Obama's probably power grabbed three times more than Bush. Huge critics of Bush have been on this show and said that. Huge ones. Uh... Chris Hedges, uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, the list goes on and on. And when you realize it only gets worse historically from here, let me ask you that, Professor, and then get into other points and talk about your books and, and, and any solutions in, in the seven or eight minutes we have left. But, and I appreciate your time. But we're here marveling at this tyranny. I mean, how much worse has it been under Obama? And if it continues to go, I mean, have you seen any historical examples where it reverses itself without some really serious things happening? Well, I, I, I think that with the latter question, it's really hard. You know, once power is taken by government, it's incredibly hard for the people to get it back short of some sort of, um, you know, revolutionary type behavior. Uh, I mean, that's just what history has shown, not just in this country, but, uh, you know, throughout history of, of, of the civilized world. Um, so I think that that is a little depressing around the margins. The, the important thing is for Americans to stop it before it spins out of control somehow. Um, and I do believe that President Obama has amplified the pattern. I mean, it's not as though other presidents haven't taken, you know, constitutionally uh, uh, shady actions before. Certainly President Lincoln, when he suspended habeas corpus back in the Civil War, uh, probably acted unconstitutionally. Uh, you know, FDR, uh, with his court packing plan in the 1930s, uh, really put pressure on the Supreme Court to entirely change its interpretation of the Constitution so he could get his political political way. Uh, and that was, uh, you know, marginal behavior at best. Uh, but I do think what President Obama is doing is very calculated uh, in a way that I've never seen before. I mean, President Bush, say what you will about him, I actually can't identify any constitutional violations by President Bush. A lot of people don't like what he did with spending, but, every, you know, for example, uh, uh, approving a Part D of Medicare, which is the prescription drug benefit, very expensive benefit, big expansion of Medicare. Care. Uh, he championed that. But you know what? That was an exercise of the spending power under Article 1, Section 8. It was perfectly constitutional. It was approved by Congress as a law, and he signed it and executed that law, as he should, under the Constitution. A lot of people don't like what he did with the NSA and began that, but all of that started with a couple of laws passed by Congress. Uh, the Patriot Act uh, and the FISA Act. And so those, are, again, are laws that the president was simply executing. Uh, president Obama is doing something totally different that we've never seen before. He's taking laws that have been passed by Congress that say thou shalt do X, like, you know, uh, implement various provisions of Obamacare. But on January 1, 2014, the statute says that specifically. And he says, no. I don't think so. Uh, and, and so he, what he's doing is, is much more bold, and he's doing it at a much faster pace. And the question is now, legally, how do we fight back? Well, there is the court of public opinion, and I, I think it's essential to start referring to the executive branch uh, as the rogue government. Uh, obviously, Congress has got a 6% approval rating. Uh, themselves. I mean, I think we have to really come to the fact that we have a broken political class that are criminals on average, uh, and we need to withdraw consent from the entire system and basically let it collapse like the Soviet Union. I think that's probably the uh, most bloodless way to go.
Homeland Security intends to just have a Tea Party rebellion that they stir up or stage and then have some type of decisive victory against domestic groups. It's a nightmare scenario, but that seems to be what they're preparing for at the Pentagon, which is totally waking up the military because they're training to take on patriots. Uh, this is just a mess with, with a bunch of autocratic communists and socialists with corporate paymasters running things. And you have the Marxist instinctive need to attack anything decent at the core of the liberal ideology. Uh, we are just in a mess. And uh, I just wish all these camp followers of collectivism would not use Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged as an instruction manual or 1984 as an instruction manual. And I hope that when they do put a Republican in as the backlash to this, that we don't let them turn into a tyrant. I mean, this is just a mess. And I think, Professor Foley, it's key to just expose historically what brought us to this point. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely. And I, I would tell you, if there's one thing that we can do uh, to stem this tide before things do spin out of control in an Ayn Rand or a 1984 scenario is to, you know, take back the Senate. Uh, in 2014, uh, that would be the quickest, most efficient way to handle this. Uh, then if we needed to impeach, we would uh, possibly uh, get some brethren uh, yes. on the Democrat side to help us and get the two-thirds. But at a minimum, uh, we might be able to push back legislatively and, and unroll some of these laws. Well, I was talking to somebody who actually knew the, the real character that the Wolf of Wall Street's about. And they were telling me how that's nothing. I mean, look at Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. Look at J.P. Morgan uh, and these deals, you know, with these Bernie Madoff type scams. And you look at how they act in that movie. That's real. The, you know, the crazy, wild, arrogant con artist streak that has infected not just the good old boys, but the whole power structure. And they're now trying to start wars with Russia and everything else. I mean, these people are going to destroy us, ladies and gentlemen. And they have a, they have a rational exuberance. They've taken the American people's uh lethargy as a green light to go crazy but what about the power structure itself believing their own propaganda uh you know being arrogant about all this laughing about all this uh bragging about you know how all oh, ford's watching everything you do with the police ha 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 with the black boxes in your car and then you look at the photo and the image of that executive I and mean, he just looks like a power crazed nut these people are destroying their own futures they are they are they are releasing evil into the world that we know is is incredibly destructive and they believe because they buy into it it gives them power over it and and that the, they are they are energized with criminal energy if you study criminology and they're getting off on the bad deeds and that is incredibly destructive we need to have a major reform and and we need smarter members of the establishment we need grassroots change but i believe the revolution can also happen within the power structure coming to their senses and and realizing that they're going to destroy their own futures as well. Yeah, you know, and we're starting to see some hope here. I mean, I, I, there is some optimism. I believe in this country. I believe in the intelligence of the American people. Uh, one of the reasons why I wrote my Tea Party book, for example, was that even though I, I first held the uh, view of the mainstream media that they were a bunch of kooks, uh, I decided to go to some of their meetings and just decide for myself. And what I found out is that they're ordinary Americans who actually care about the Constitution. They want to read about it. They want to learn it. I think that's encouraging. They've elected great people like Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, Rand Paul. Uh, and I think that those uh, young sort of Turks in the Senate are having an impact and shaking things up. And I think if the American people kind of can stay on top of it, uh, you know, we have a chance. So That's right. I mean, the power structure wouldn't be demonizing the real libertarian constitutional Tea Party and saying it's the main threat in the Republican Democratic leadership, all the different associations, all the different fake business associations, all the crony groups are absolutely scared to death of a libertarian constitutional takeover because we have a chance. We have the answers. We have the prosperity. Socialism, cronyism, fascism doesn't work. Freedom works. Legalize freedom. God bless you, Professor Foley. Thank you for the time. Thanks so much, Alex. I enjoy your show very much. Thank you. Wow, that's a great lady. Check out her books at ElizabethPriceFoley.com. And that's what this broadcast is, is a platform for great political minds, constitutional minds, to try to educate the public and have a larger discussion. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. 
And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support 100% organic coffee infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick, it has really good caffeine in it, it has a good clean wake up that lasts for a long time, doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth, it's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself. I'm telling you, this is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139.